and I have some extra organizing tips for you if you need help getting your kitchen into tip-top shape. I'm going to talk about grocery shopping and also putting our groceries away when we get home. Maybe you put the bags where they go and your family knows exactly where items go in the pantry. I like to stock the pantry myself. The reason why I like to stock the pantry myself is because I like to make sure that all of the items are put in their place. I have special containers in my freezer for items that will be used in a meal together. In my refrigerator, I put all of the breakfast items together and all of the lunch items together so that my kids can easily get what they need to make breakfast or to make lunch. Or they want to make a sandwich, everything they need in order to do that is in one place. That way you're not throwing things around thinking where's the cheese or believing that you don't have something because you can't find it quickly and easily. In my refrigerator and small freezer, I organize groceries by meal and also uh, put them in an order that will make them easy for me to access. So for instance, if you're a shorter person, you'll want to make sure that the items that you eat on a regular basis are down low so that you can reach them. Now my children are older. But when they were smaller, I put the items for them to snack on down low so that they could go into the refrigerator without me and get exactly what they needed. You want to make sure that you have items that you eat on a daily basis or those quick meal items that you need accessible to you so that when you're tired, you can find them easily. And I'm not necessarily the most tall woman ever but I do have decent height, so I have a special shelf in the top of the refrigerator where I put the foods and the snacks that I need so that I can get my blood sugar up because I have a special diet because there are foods that I can't eat that my family eats. And so I supplement my items for other items, so I wanna make sure that they're available for me when I need them. I also have a container in my freezer that has all of my ice packs in it. So if I ask my family to get me an ice pack, the ice packs don't get lost within all of the food in the freezer. And also I like them nice and flat. After years of begging, I finally got a deep freezer this year. So the first thing I did to my deep freezer was put a box in the bottom so that it wasn't so deep. That way I didn't have to reach down so far into the freezer to pull things out. Another thing that I did was I put groups of things in bags. So I have canvas bags and one bag may be just for meats. Then I have another bag that's just for all of the items that we put into our smoothies. I also color coded the bags. So all of my items for smoothies are in the green bag because they're fruits and vegetables. And all of my breads are in a blue and white bag because as a kid, my favorite bread brand had a blue and white bag. This bag method is extremely efficient for me and it helps me to preserve my energy because instead of reaching around and having to throw all the different individual packages of foods around in the freezer, I can just reach in for a bag for a particular type of foods and move them around until I find the one that I need. Also, I have trouble gripping items, and so to be able to reach in and grab the handles of one bag is a lot easier. I also put a list on the top of my freezer because my family was saying that they couldn't find items in the freezer or they didn't know that a particular item was in the freezer. So if there's a list on the top that tells you there should be three packages of ground beef in the freezer, then you need to keep looking until you find the three packages of ground beef that I said were in there. Also, I use a freezer bag method. So I buy a big package of any particular kind of meat and then I transfer the cooked meat into smaller packages. Soon I will have a video on meal planning and then you'll see how I actually go through the process of deciding which meals I'm going to prepare and how that helps me create my grocery list. My pantry is a lot 
like my refrigerator. I have items that go together in a special bin. Like I have a bin that's specifically for me for snacks and it has my name on it so that the kids know don't go in there and steal mommy snacks. Also, I take items out of their original container sometimes and I put them in containers that are easier to grip or containers that leave more room for more items to go into the pantry. When you stick items on shelves in the pantry, you want to be really conscious of what height you're putting the items in the pantry. If it's heavy, don't put it too high or too low because you'll injure yourself trying to get them. My highest shelf in the pantry is the one that I don't plan on reaching up to that often. So that's where I put those overflow foods uh, that are there until I run out of what I already have down low. Stocking up on foods is another way to really preserve your energy. If you're able to, I've seen suggestions that you spend $10 of your grocery budget getting items that you're not running out of right now, but you can store them in the freezer or in the pantry so that you don't have to run to the store if you run out of them later. I started following a suggestion that you spend about $10 each time you go to the grocery store stocking up on items like toilet paper and paper towels, also items that can be stored in dry goods in your pantry for a long time without spoiling, or that can be frozen for a long time so that you're not running to the store because you have run out of those particular items. So that's a little bit more of an in-depth explanation of how I store things in my kitchen. Next time we talk about food, which will be the week after next, I'll talk to you about how I go through the meal planning process and how that generates my grocery list for me. Next week, I have tips for partners and family to make it a little easier on the Spoonie in their lives. So if you have suggestions or requests for that video, please hit me on Facebook or on Twitter and leave those suggestions with me and go to include those in the video. Here on YouTube, feel free to leave messages and comments about the different posts that I put on here. However, I can't guarantee that I'll be able to weed through all of the comments that you leave here. So I recommend that you email me on my Gmail account. There is a Facebook page that you can go to and you can like and I have daily questions there and then also you can use that opportunity to post the answers to those questions and read what other people say and maybe meet some new friends. <laughs>